called this regularly scheduled meeting of the Harlington City Commission, which has been duly posted to order, and call upon uh, Commissioner Ruben De La Rosa to lead us in an invocation. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking you for your guidance and wisdom and the support as we begin this meeting. Help us engage in meaningful discussions, allowing us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of the community. Fill us with grace, Lord God, as we make decisions that may affect the community. Continue to remind us that all that we do here today is all that we accomplish is for the pursuit of the trust for the greater glory of you and for the service of humanity. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, welcome everybody to our meeting tonight. We're glad to have you here. I'm going to start with item one, which is a proclamation proclaiming September 17th through the 23rd, 2019 as Constitution Week. So I'd like to invite uh, our guests up to receive that proclamation. Stand over here and kind of face out that way. You might think they're going to take your, your picture. every year to remind ourselves of the importance of the Constitution. We appreciate your uh, organization always bringing this uh, as something that we need to do to remind ourselves of the, of, of the importance of the Constitution of the United States and, and how much it really means to us, even though we don't think about it every day. Maybe this will help us think about it more often. Whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government and a republican dedicated to the rule by law. Whereas September 17, 2019 marks the 230th second anniversary of the framing of the Constitution of the United States by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate it, <coughs> Public Law 915 guarantees the issue <coughs> of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States designating September 17th through the 23rd, 2019 as Constitution Week. And now, therefore, I, Chris Boswell, Mayor of the City of Harlingen, to hereby proclaim the week of September 17th through September 23rd, 2019 as Constitution Week in the City of Harlingen, and to hereby ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals of the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us by this guardian of our liberties. So I present this to you all, and if you want to tell us about uh, anything about your organization, and, and um, <coughs> we enjoy hearing from you. Well, this is our vice regent, and I'd like her to say some words too, but we really appreciate the city, you know, helping us to celebrate this week. We had a um, display up in the Harlingen Public Library in the month of August because we couldn't get it for September, but it was a way of also just letting people know that it was coming up and hopefully they will remind themselves of the importance of this document, including the Bill of Rights. So thank you for, for uh, from uh, the 10 Thomas Barlow chapter for bringing this All right. Congratulations and thank you all for always remembering our uh, Constitution and helping the city of Arlington to remember the United States Constitution. We hope that the, the school district will also help with this. I'm sure they will. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> well, item two is a presentation of the status of ongoing drainage projects. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, we want to just uh, give an update. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, an update report <clears throat> on the drainage improvements and how we're doing. 
Uh, first, I want to start with a little recap of the event that happened June 24th, um, where we received in the city 12 to 15 inches of rainfall in uh, three and a half hours. Uh, the image that we see here is just a, um, a snapshot of what we encountered <coughs> that day uh, from being out there. Uh, we understand that there was a little bit more areas than that that were actually affected. We did cover those. Uh, we actually we covered the entire city, but this was the areas at that particular time that were heavily affected by the rain and, and while well, crews were out there on the 24th uh, through midnight uh, covering. From the National uh, Weather Service, they reported that uh, the 12 to 15 inches and in some cases more than that of rainfall in three and a half hours. Uh, the area saw winds of upwards of 65 to 75 miles per hour and the Arroyo Colorado crested at 22.67 feet, which is uh, the highest level since June in 2018. Uh, and it was recorded as the fourth highest uh, of record, which is uh, very significant. Um, moving on, how we responded, the city created a, sorry about that. The city created uh, an email address and we put it in small business cards and we distributed, we posted it, we used social media. Uh, it was very helpful to us. This was something that wasn't done before. Uh, it is report hgn at myharlingen.us. Uh, it's still up now. We're still receiving information. But uh, the main focus of this is to allow uh, our residents, our citizens, and even our employees uh, to take pictures. We know that a lot of people took pictures out there of uh, events as it was happening. Uh, we used all that information. We put into our GIS system, we were able to map a lot of the areas as they were coming in. Uh, but more importantly, we shared that information with FEMA. This is a screenshot of their uh, computer system when they came down. And the green dots indicate the areas where they did make contact with the residents. The orange <coughs> are the ones that uh, were not able to make contact on that particular day. This is a screenshot of, I believe, July uh, 31st. And, uh, and so they went back, but they were able to map it, they were able to gather information, and they continued. Uh, we know from FEMA themselves that they are still here, they're still collecting information, they're still talking to folks, they're gonna be here until September uh, 16th. Uh, so people can still go out and, and reach out to them, but uh, by using that email, they also kept a record for themselves, for their insurance, and so on. Uh, debris collection, as of August 20th, uh, city crews working Saturdays and Sundays. We collected just over 4.4 million pounds of brush and debris, uh, and we're still collecting, and that's in addition to the regular services that we provide. Um, and we're gonna continue to do so until all the debris is, is collected for, for our citizens. Um, improvements that we have been making, uh, we, are, we are learning, we created a chart of all the improvement projects. This, uh, well, I don't mean to say all of them, but these are ones that have been identified and charted and we're tracking. Uh, they're listing, they're on our website. Um, I have here a link to the website, which should be working, which will take you directly to, to the chart, as I mentioned. But what I want to do real quick is just go back to the homepage to show everybody where they can find this one's easily, we're gonna keep them up there, we're gonna keep updating them and providing information for our citizens. So on our regular homepage for the city of Harlingen, we have a popular links to the left full of tabs that people can easily go. The last one on the list now is a drainage maintenance map. You select that which takes you to our public works where we show an interactive map of our maintenance for our uh, drainage ditches. Um, it has a bar that says uh, click here. This is the current drainage improvement projects. As you can see, it goes back to the chart. We select one from there, and it will forward you to information on that particular site. This one happens to be secluded acres, <coughs> drainage improvements. We give a description of what's going on and when it happened. We provide some aerial images of the area that was affected and what's uh, being done some additional information, whatever we have we're putting out there to let our, our residents know what, what is being done. Can I ask you a real quick question? Yes, sir. <coughs> On the drainage ditches, the, the ones that are not ours, are they up there? Like the ones that belong to the irrigation number five and 
the other entities they're not up there not not yet sir we we are working with them can i suggest it just to put um, some kind of link that would link them to whoever uh, absolutely you know that, that handles the irrigation number five or four so they're not do you understand because if, if a citizen is looking at their drainage canal and it's not ours i think they need to know that and then the easiest way is just here's the information to call you know, and just yes, sir. yes, sir. Certainly, we can do that. Okay, I'm sorry. Certainly, we can do that. Um, and so, going back, you know, we have a, an can interactive I, map. Can I interrupt you just for a second? Yes, so, when you go back to that prior one, the uh, drainage improvement, that one, just to identify, the the number is the number of days. Yes. And then the other is the date in which to expect the project to commence. To commence, that's to commence. correct. Okay. So what make right. Sure? So it started. It started on this date, and it's going to take approximately this amount of, of days to be completed. In the case of that one, ninety nine days. Yes. Okay. And then we we continuously update if if things change. We get rain days and so on, and we're trying to, to keep up and update it as as it as it moves and on. And the link on the right there on the left takes you to the actual project. The the dialogue that came from the other. <coughs> you go to the to the before you got to here. It showed all the different interactive maps. Well, the, the interactive map for now is it, it's we are and I'll select it, and that takes you to a map that will provide links to particular drain ditches that are being worked on, and it gives you a status. First, it gives you the name, and this name is how we recognize it, how we identify it on the field, and then we provide a status of what was done to it on this particular uh, week from August 9th. I'm sorry, from August 5th through the 9th, uh, the three deck moor was out there. We provide a picture of what actually was out there, the, the equipment that was used. And so this is a, a, a retention pond on Hickory Hill. And so that's why you see a big, large area, but it's actually a, a, a lowered area. And on the map that was below that one, you have a PDF describing of your project and where you're at with it. Because this one is the main, <coughs> the top one is the maintenance. Yes, sir. The, the one below it. This link right here. I see that. Oh, maybe it's there that I read it. Never mind. Never mind. I got it. Okay. And again, this is this is something that we're working on. This is something new that we're doing. So we're constantly tweaking, trying to find uh, better ways. We're getting feedback, and and obviously those links is a great feedback, as Commissioner Rivas suggested, and we'll definitely look at that and be putting that up there. So. Moving on, drainage improvements, the uh, storm drains that are televised, what you see here in this map, in this uh, purple lines or uh, different color lines, those are all our underground storm lines throughout the city. <coughs> and this is just some of the dates of some of the areas that have been televised where we have that remote control camera that we put into the drains. We're looking for shifting, we're looking for cracks, we're looking for blockage. Um, we've done Sendero Road, Green Jay, Kingfisher, this was all in the Hickory Hill area. Uh, we started doing downtown, and we did encounter on 70 feet. We encountered a lot of mud and debris that was stuck in there, so now we bring additional equipment. We're flushing that out. We're hoping to be back out there again and, and finish the downtown area, and then this is some of the dates that we are, uh, some of the streets and dates that we are uh, scheduling to do next. And again, this is going to continue to be changing and continue to be updating us <coughs> as we continue these lines and maintenance. Um, in addition to that, uh, we saw secluded acres, uh, part of the town hall meetings that we had. Um, there was an issue concern about the berm, that it was too low and water had gone over. So we have sent our crews out there. They have already started this, uh, this um, already happened and we continue to improve this area. Uh, we have uh, begun to reprofile the ditch to increase the width um, and the material that's being taken out is putting back on the berm so we're using the material that's already there. Uh, we're going to go back and, and look at it again and make sure that we're hitting the right volume. If it needs to be readjusted, we will make adjustments as we go. Uh, in addition to that, we're in a partnership with the Cameron County Drainage District Number 5 and the Harlingen Irrigation District Number 1 and we thank them for partnering with us. These are all of the cul-de-sacs and secluded acres and the pipe, the drainage pipes that go into that uh, canal. And so we are partnering up with them and doing 
improvements to include the installation of flood gates on the storm pipes that discharge storm water from secluded acres. And so this is just a, a sample of the flap gate that we're looking at. Um, the flap gates are intended to keep storm water from the drain ditch to flow back into the subdivision. So what was happening when the level was rising too much, then you know it equalizes and it was going back. So we're hoping that this prevents that, keeps the water on the canal and keeps pushing in the direction that it needs to go out. Um, there is a high demand for this type of flaps, so we have been told that we're looking at about a 10 to 12 weeks for the flap gate. We're gonna continue to do our maintenance. We are calling that vendor constantly to kind of squeeze us in there. And uh, mm -hmm. as soon as we can get those in there, we're gonna schedule those to get installed and that'll be updated as well. Is this a, uh, an experiment to see how well they work or are we gonna start using these? I know we have other areas that experience backups when like the Arroyo right. Colorado gets and a certain so, level. Right, so this, this flaps, are marketable they've been using them in other areas and stuff we haven't used them obviously in this particular area here and so we're we're trying them here but we're very confident that they're they're going to work just because of of the way that they hold it back um and so That's with cool. our partnership with the cameron county um drainage district number five they are currently excavating um two regional stormwater detention ponds uh, off of Breedlove Road, this would be one and two that are in blue here, and then the one in yellow is one that's going to be done at a later time. And these pots, ponds, excuse me, are downstream along the main drainage canal that services secluded acres and Spanish acres. <coughs> As you can see by the arrows, they're also taking some other areas yeah. that's coming down and it's feeding. And we're hoping that this ones will get <coughs> and retain a lot of that water and hold volume. Um, they're designed to take water from the drain ditch. Uh, these two pods will have a storage capacity of about 78 million gallons. If you can imagine a million of gallons, that's, that's a lot of capacity. So the number one is approximately 13 acres. Number two is 16 acres respectively. They're about eight foot deep. And so we're hoping that they hold water and kind of pull it out faster and stay in the area. That is the intent for these. The next one after in about 12 months or so after these two are completed, they're working on another detention pond just north of that that will continue to support both of these, but will bring additional water uh, from other areas, not including here, but from other areas of the city, other subdivisions, and, and, and work similarly like that. And so this is just a great partnership that we have with the Cameron County Drainage District and the Harlingen Irrigation District. Um, this is just another um, area, so to to show that they're already working, they're already being dug. Uh, this is kind of like a standing level view and this would be more like an aerial view from our drone. Uh, this would be pond number one and pond number two. So this is the 13 acre one, this is the uh, 16 acre one approximately. <coughs> and as you can see this, this height right here, that's about eight feet in height, eight feet deep. So it, it's holding quite a bit of water. Um, continuing with the partnership, um, work is scheduled to start on the 13th Street, uh, 13th Street Drainage District, located on the west side of 13th Street, extending almost 10,000 linear feet. Uh, the scope of the work will include the widening of the ditch and increasing the size of one culvert crossing. And the Harlingen Irrigation District, number one, will provide the majority of the labor and equipment, and the city's cost share is 100,000, uh, 500, uh, to cover the portion between Mats and Montezuma. Another project that we're working on is the widening of Dixie Land and drainage ditch. And the scope of this is also to widen the ditch to increase the size of four culvert crossings in the area. Uh, and again, Harlingen Irrigation District uh, is, will be providing the majority of the labor and equipment and materials, and the city has a cost share uh, of 342,000 to cover the portion between Lincoln and west of Dixie. And, and both of these projects are expected to be completed sometime in March of 2020. Um, <clears throat> in addition, the 9th and 13th Street storm drainage project, um, the scope of work for this one will include the removal of existing storm sewer drain pipes, uh, and then where they're gonna be replaced by 40 inch concrete pipes, 14 manholes and 52 inlets will also be removed and replaced. Uh, on August 7th, 
the City Commission committed to fund this project under the fiscal year 2019-2020, and we expect the contractor to begin construction in early November. And this project will take five to six months to complete. And as you can see, and I think we're familiar with this one, it's already been presented before. The Halpin Road, again, this is part of the town hall meetings that we had. The scope of work is to reestablish a roadside ditch on both sides of the road from business 83 north to the main drain ditch. Some driveway covers <coughs> will have to be removed and rebuilt. Uh, in addition, we identified some driveways that were created without covers, so those are going to have to be redone. Uh, city crews are scheduled to begin excavating the area on September 16th, and the project we expect to be completed around October 11th. Another project is the Becky Lane Storm Drain. Um, this one is over here in the Treasure Hills area. Public Works crews have done a lot of work in this area already. Uh, they have removed about 184 linear feet of curb. Uh, in addition to a 24-inch concrete pipe was installed on Emerald Lake to carry the water. And as you can see by some of the pictures, they're working on that. Um, and so they have reconstructed the, the curb there. We rebuilt some driveways and uh, crews are currently installing the boxing lens. Unfortunately, we've had a little bit of rain, and so those ones have been delayed a little bit, but we expect as soon as it clears to go back in there and install those and, and have this project complete. The Jefferson Drain Ditch. Again, this is a site view. This is Bonham Elementary. On June 24th, it resulted from additional damage to the concrete panels. Um, <coughs> we worked together with our Hollingen uh, ISD came up with a map uh, to reroute the, the traffic, creating this Jefferson Street in, it, for this portion between 21st and 25th into a one-way, uh, creating additional temporary parking for their faculty and allowing the parents who used to park in this area to now uh, redirect and park over here. This is an alleyway that we improved uh, so that the flow of traffic can continue around the school. It's working very well for us. The school is happy. They're still getting their, their kids in and out. Um, in addition, the city expects to uh, award this one in uh, this project in September, allowing the repairs to begin in October with a completion date of about December 2019. And as you can see, some of the, some of the conditions of that, the force of the water. Uh, Lake Drive, this was one that uh, public crews went out there and they uh, removed two undersized curb inlets. We have had some issues in the past before and citizens had brought that to our attention. And so those were replaced by bigger three foot by four feet great inlets and a second 18 inch concrete storm drain that was installed across. Uh, this project is already completed and done. Beckham Road, the same. When we were out there, we noticed and identified uh, that the flow was not going in some of the areas of Beckham, uh, more closely here and here indicated by, by red, which was some great inlet that was just completely covered with dirt and debris. Um, so crews have gone out there and removed and reset the existing storm drain pipes on the north end. This side over here, which is this side. Um, and the pipes on the north end of the so red of the roadside ditch. This is where the roadside ditch discharges onto the main drainage ditch. Work was completed on July 26, and then crews <coughs> will continue to monitor this because uh, it, since it got clogged up before, we want to make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, Altas Palmas, again, we noticed that there was an undersized PVC pipe. Uh, crews went out there, replaced that 8 inch with an 18 inch diameter corrugated pipe and the area where the pipe discharges onto the main ditch was also cleared of any vegetation. Again, this work was, uh, is expected to be completed, I'm sorry, was completed, uh, and this is the end result of it. Now we have a clear passage. It, during hazard mitigation and grant applications that we have out there, uh, these are just uh, the latest ones that we have pending information on. They were all submitted to the Texas Service Storms, the grants I'm sorry, we're submitted under the DR 4377 Texas Severe Storms and Flooding. The grants are assist 
are to assist the drainage improvements throughout the city by increasing ditch capacity and upgrading existing storm sewers. The city would, the total amount for the funding is 10 million point, 10.2 million, and the city would have a 25% match funding in the amount of 2.5 million uh, should they all be awarded. And this is just the, um, a little bit more detail of the applications that they submitted in the general area. Uh, the, fi the fifth and seventh street storm sewer improvements project, which is known as system 021. Um, the city is proposing to mitigate the problem of roadways and structure flooding by making improvements to the existing storm sewer system by increasing capacity to the drainage system. Um, and again, the areas in yellow are the areas that we are proposing to improve, but the areas in blue and purple is all the area that it services, um, that, that this improvement would service. So we are looking at a lot of subdivision area, uh, residential, some commercial that's coming in. The Jefferson uh, Street Improvement Project, which is System 124, and again, the city is proposing to mitigate the problem of the roadways and structure flooding occurrence in the surrounding subdivisions. And we are trying to increase, uh, improve the existing storm sewer system by increasing <coughs> capacity of the drainage system. Um, and, and again, this is the area that, this is a city lake, so this would be east of the city lake. A uh, little bit of um, Tyler here and stuff. <coughs> I believe this is business 77 here in Morgan, as it connects to Peter Piper on this area. The 21st Street Storm Sewer System, System 007. Um, again, the same. We are uh, the city is proposing to mitigate the problem. Uh, we want to make improvement to the existing storm sewer. Uh, from here to here, this is the Jefferson Ditch. This is where uh, the Peter Piper is. So we have a. Uh, uh, it's picking up from Morgan to the east. <coughs> and then Austin all the way south to Jefferson. It's a large area that we, you know, if we get this grant, it would make great improvements. The Business 77 storm sewer improvements, which is also known as System 139. And again, this is all in the same uh, general area, Austin Road business from Austin South all the way to Jefferson again, this is the Peter Piper. So all of these four systems essentially connect together. Um, this area right here is also has a large retail, so we would be assisting uh, the retail, residential, our streets. Uh, I mean, we're really hoping to, to get this ones and, and uh, continue to improve. I can answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Rodrigo or Dan? Thank you for the presentation. Very informative. Thank you. Uh, well, I just want to say how, how uh, really proud I am of our city staff and how uh, our, our uh, city manager and our entire organization has responded to uh, the floods that we had in, in June. And while we've had a good master drainage plan that we've been working through uh, over the last 10 years, and while we've made some good strides towards that, I think that. Uh, uh, we listened to what people said at the town hall meetings. We also listened to other information that came in from our residents and have really tried to redouble our efforts and strengthen our efforts uh, to address issues as, as they came up. And I think the, the additional work that has gone into this, some of these projects are small, like $8,000, and some of them are hundreds of thousands, and some of them are multi million dollar projects and we still have others that as you noted at the end of the presentation are pending as we wait as we, uh, grant application decisions uh, but it uh, is an, uh, an indication of the work that uh, our city staff is doing to, to remedy and improve our drainage situation in the city of Harlingen and I think that uh, what you all have done is really uh, innovative it's been responsive and it, it, uh, it, it is a uh, stepping up of, of what we need to do with regard to uh, our drainage improvements in our community. And so I want to thank, thank everybody and recognize everybody uh, for the hard work that they've put in, not just 
after the storm and in response to it, but in getting these projects underway and moving more quickly and thinking about how we can do things differently to improve our drainage situation. So it's really, uh, uh, I think, uh, worth, worth recognition <coughs> and thank praise. You. So thank you all. Thank you for that thank report. You. We're not done. We're not done with what you showed us. And when we're done with what you showed us, we're still not going to be done. That's, that's correct. But we're going to keep working at it every correct. single day. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Item three is the approval of the minutes of the special meeting of June 24th, 2019 and the regular meeting of <coughs> August 7th, 2019. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Consent agenda, item four. Items four A through D is our motion to adopt the consent agenda. So second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. And we're going uh, to move a couple of these items around without objection. I'm going to take item eight up uh, first consideration of possible action. To approve an ordinance on first reading adoption, adopting the city of Arlington's budget for fiscal year 2019-20. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Texas Senate Bill uh, number 656, effective September 1st, 2013, requires a city commission's vote to adopt a budget to be a record vote. Exhibit A dis displays total proposed revenues and expenditures and estimated fund balances by funds for fiscal year 2019 to 2020. Uh, total proposed revenues in Exhibit A total $77,585,220. Total proposed expenditures total $79,247,357. Uh, uh, staff recommends approval of the 2019-2020 budget. Okay. I'd like to ask the city attorney to read the caption then, please. An ordinance adopting the revenue and expenditure budget for the city of Harlingen, Texas for the fiscal year October 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2020 in the amount of $77,585,220 and $79,247,357 respectively, providing for publication of the caption of this ordinance and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, so uh, we're taking in ballpark 77 million. We're going to spend 79, so we're going to spend $2 million more, correct? Uh, yes. We'll and, need and so that $2 million is coming from our rainy day fund. Uh, from various funds, that 77 million is all inclusive of not just general fund, mm -hmm. special revenue funds, as well as enterprise funds. Um, and internal services funds. Okay. Okay. It, it, when adopted, it needs to be, or voted on, I'm sorry, it needs to be a record vote. I'd like to note that we had, uh, we've had the, we've, we've had our budget packet since early July. We've had two uh, workshops on the budget and two public hearings on the, one public hearing on the budget. So is there any dis other discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Yeah, it's a big record vote. Huh? Record vote. Commissioner. Aye. Uh, Commissioner aye. 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 All right. Uh, motion passes. All right. And we're going to go to item six, which is consideration of possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading by record vote adopting the 2019 Ad Valorem tax rate for maintenance and operation for fiscal year 2019-20. Thank you, Mayor. The adoption of the city's tax rate is done in two parts. The first part is the maintenance and operation tax rate, which is being proposed at 0 0.518100 cents per $100 valuation. Together with the interest and sinking rate, the total proposed tax rate for the city of Arlington is uh, 0 .63, uh, 63 cents per $100. All legal requirements have been met for the adoption of the tax rate. Uh, staff recommends approval. I ask the city attorney to read the caption, please. Okay. An ordinance fixing the ad valorem tax rate for maintenance and operations for the city of Harlingen, Texas for the calendar year 2019 at 0 .5181 per $100 valuation, providing for publication and ordaining other matters relating to the foregoing. 
Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? So moved. Second. Any discussion? It is also a record vote. Right. We'll call for a record vote. As to, uh, starting down here with Commissioner Odey. Aye. No. Aye. 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 Right. Motion carries. Item seven, consideration possible action to approve an ordinance of first reading by record vote adopting the 2019 Avalon tax rate for interest and sinking fund for fiscal year 2019-20. Thank you, Mayor. This is the second part of the tax rate, the, which is the interest and sinking rate, which is proposed at 0 0.111900 cents per $100 valuation. The interest and sinking portion of the tax rate pays for the city's debt service for the fiscal year 2020. Together with the maintenance and operation rate, the total proposed tax rate is 63 cents per $100 valuation. All legal requirements have been met for the adoption of the tax rate, and staff recommends approval. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt? Oh, I need to uh, ask the city attorney to read the or uh, caption to the ordinance, please. An ordinance fixing the ad valorem tax rate for interest and sinking payments for the city of Harlingen, Texas, for the calendar year 2019 at .1119 per $100 valuation, providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Second. All, all those in favor say aye. We'll start with uh, Commissioner Udrebe. Aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> Now Mayor, we're going to go to item five. Mayor, Commissioner, I just want to point out that uh, this is Sergio's last budget presentation. He has uh, accepted a position at another city, and I'm not going to say the name, but uh, we wish him well. He's done a fantastic job for our community, and certainly appreciate all his efforts. So we need to let the doors. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. It's uh, been great working for the city of Harlingen and working with great uh, great leadership and a uh, great finance director in El Vitorino and great management. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Commission. We'll be sad to see you go. Um, the other city doesn't deserve it to have you. No, and, and I, I did ask him if he'd deliver a letter for me uh, to the other city manager, but uh, he said he would. Uh, so. <laughs> Can I send him a picture? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right, now item five, uh, <coughs> by Hilltop uh, Security regarding refinancing opportunities for the city of Carlson. And welcome. Honorable Mayor and Commissioners, Mr. Serna, it's a pleasure to be back in Harlingen this evening. The item I have uh, to discuss today is a potential refinancing opportunity. If I may ask you to please turn to page three in the presentation I put in front of you. As I generally do when I come to visit, I think it's always important to kind of start off on where we are from a market perspective. And we are in an extremely unique interest rate environment and market conditions at this time. This is the bond buyers index of 20 municipal bonds, and this goes back uh, over a period of 20 years. This is an index that comes out every Thursday, and while this is not the rate that Harlingen would get, I think it is very helpful to look at and see um, what the market trends are doing. If you look at the chart, we go back when we're at the late um, 1990s, we were at rates that were over 6%. The rate that came out last week was 2.97%. If you go back and look at this chart, um, from a historical perspective, when we were in July of 2016, we were at what was then the lowest interest rates that we had had since the 60s. This chart actually lags a little bit, but the rates that we've seen over the last week or two are now lower than the rates that we saw back in July of 2016. So we are now at the lowest rates since the 60s, and over 99% of the time, interest rates have been higher. As a barometer to, to reflect that, I had a, a bond sale for uh, another city that I work with last week, 
who had sold bonds at approximately the same time in 2016, and the interest rate that they received last week was lower than the rate that they had in 2016. On the next page, we talk a little bit about um, the same chart, but I wanted to show you what it looked like just over what had happened over the course of one year. So if you go back a year ago, interest rates were just slightly below 4%. And now we're looking at the same index, which, which is just slightly below 3%. So in a one-year period, we have seen a reduction from just under 4% to under 3%, uh, a 1% movement, which is very significant. On the next page, there's one other um, highlight we wanted to talk about, and that is what the yield curve has looked like. In this historically low interest rate environment, we are seeing a compression in credit spreads. So the, the bottom line shows the AAA, the red line shows the AA, which would be reflective of the rating that the city would get with your AA <coughs> plus AA minus rating, and then it goes higher. To not only reflect um, a market anomaly that we've seen from compressed interest rates, um, we saw last week another one of the cities we work with had two competitive sales. One was for tax-exempt bonds, one was for taxable bonds. They both had a 20-year final maturity, and the difference between the two was one basis point. And we're just in an, and if you step back and ask why, because normally there's a much more significant. We've got some inverted parts of the yield curve. We have a lot going on from a geopolitical perspective. Uh, there are just a number of things that are going on in the markets that are causing this um, unique opportunity for interest rates declining and potential refinancing opportunities. If I may ask you to turn to slide six. The city issued bonds in 2010. They were certificates of obligation in the amount of $3,090,000. Currently, beginning um, in 2020, there will be $1,865,000 that is callable in maturities 2021 through 2030, and those had interest rates of 3.5% up to 4.125. At the bottom of the schedule, we show the maturity schedule and the interest rate, and all of those bonds are callable on February 15th, 2020. Moving on to two pages from now, um, we look at what the existing debt is because whenever we bring to you refinancing opportunities, we try to look at it not only within the context of that specific bond issue, but we also want to look at it within the perspective of the overall debt profile. So on what we have on page 8, we show the city's outstanding debt. And you can see that it's relatively level from 2020 <coughs> out through 2024, and then it starts declining. So one of the things that we want to talk about today, not only is if you're potentially interested in a refinancing, we wanted to talk about where we think it would have the most benefit for the city. So what we've looked at on slide number 9 is a refinancing with the savings up front. Basically, what we would suggest if this is something that the city is interested in, that we target the savings pretty much from 2021 to 2024, where it would have the most impact. When we ran the analysis based on rates as of September 3rd, uh, the refunding PAR amount is projected to be $1,730,000 with gross savings of $165,709. And when we target the savings between 2021 and 2024, on average, that is $40,000 a year. When we take the present value calculation of the savings, it's slightly over $155,000. So on a present value benefit, it's over 8%, 8.324%. And so when we looked at the true interest cost, 1.936. So if you think about it, you would be trading an interest rate of approximately 1.9% for coupons that are three and a half up to four and an eighth. And we have a chart underneath, so you can see where we're targeting uh, the savings on that particular bond issue. Um, on the last slide, I wanted to talk a little bit about the timing considerations. With the passage of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, in December of 2017, advanced refundings are no longer permitted. So you can only do a current refunding, and current refundings can be done. You don't have to do it exactly on the call date, but it has to be within 90 days of the call date. 
So with the February 15, 2020 call date, the first day that the proposed refunding could even close would not be until November 18th. You can even price these bonds. The first possible day you could price them would really be about October 17th. So we just wanted to highlight that, that um, it has been very much a, a change in the markets, not being able to look at advanced refundings. So this really is sort of the first opportunity that you would have uh, to be able to consider this refunding. You can refund it as early as I mentioned or any time between now or February or even thereafter if that would be the desire of the Commission. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. So you're... Um I guess disclosures. I'm securities licensed as a financial advisor and a financial analyst. Um, what we're going through is totally bizarre. Um, Europe and much of the world has negative interest rates, which is, as any economist would know, can't happen until it does. <coughs> uh, the U.S. may be heading there. Um, no one knows what this means. Everybody can make guesses, but nobody knows why it's happening or what are the repercussions and the, and the uh, law of unintended consequences. Interest rates have plummeted just in the last two weeks, but in the last what, four or five months, plummeted. Uh, so it would behoove us to refinance. Now you're talking about October. Um, that's when you would price these, so the interest rate would be different from the theoretical interest rate presented today. Is that correct? Yes, sir, Commissioner. Yeah. Um, we, we actually took rates as of the third, and in order to provide a cushion, we added 25 basis points to them. So okay. we hope that they are conservative, but that we would be subject to whatever the prevailing interest rates are at that time. Right, and unless something drastically changes in this country or in the world in the next five, six weeks, interest rates are going down. That's the bet. It's, you, to your point, there is globally $17 trillion yeah, yeah. of debt that's got yeah. negative yields. Yeah, that's... Mm. I mean, it, <laughs> when, when, when I try to explain this to people, they go, huh? I'm <laughs> You mean I have to pay you to take my money? Yes. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes, so sir. On slide eight, you show our current debt, which is at 32 million. But, but you're only addressing one of those lines, is that correct? Yes, sir. To, so we know where we're at, and, and we're just proposing one of, only one of this, which the, is going to be the- The one that's callable. The one that's callable, which is the two, which is the current balance is 3.953? No. The current balance is now down to 1,865,000. Um, so it's not on this chart, okay. No. It's on, page, it's on page six. I, I, I'm looking at this chart. So that's one prior that you already rolled off of this chart. So what we did is on slide eight, that is a snapshot of the entire debt of the city of Harlingen that is payable from Avalorum taxes. Okay. So we looked at if you do level savings in the bond issue, but then we stepped back and we looked at your overall debt profile. And because you've got a little bit of a plateau and then it declines, having savings where your debt service is higher actually brings better value to the city than having savings where the <coughs> overall debt service is much lower. We were just trying to optimize the structure. And so. I understand. I, I just didn't, I didn't know if you were trying to take 2019 through 2027, and we're going to call all of that. That's why I asked the question, because I was interested in that we don't match. But we're talking just one, the one that's current that's called. Yes, sir. Okay. And so um, what is the uh, maturity date of, the, of these particular bonds you're talking about? Yes, sir. They mature 2021 through 2030. And okay. we would, but the and one we, you're talking about? Yes. Okay, uh, so are we going to do a 30-year bond, a 20-year bond, a 10-year bond, a three-year bond? What we would suggest <laughs> is not extending the final maturity at all. That was the answer I was looking for. Yes, Thank sir. you. We're just this would be a fairly modest yes, sir. Annual, <clears throat> annualized savings over the next five. And included five. in the savings, I'm sorry. 
uh, this would be a fairly modest savings of, over the next five years, principally between 21 and 24. Yes, sir. I mean, primarily, principally is a confusing word since we're talking about principal so. and interest, but <laughs> uh, primarily during those four years, but it'd be a total, be a total savings of 165,000 uh, to, uh, to do the refund, uh, refunding of the bonds. So this is just a presentation tonight. It's not, we're not asking, nobody's asking for any action. It's just a kind of a, uh, this is an opportunity that we could take advantage of to save some some money. I mean, it, it's, you know, 40,000, you know, $43,000 in 21. That's, you know, that's somebody's salary somewhere. Right. Right. I mean, that's a- That's some money. That's yeah, some money. That's, a, that's, that's, real, that's real money. And uh, over over the life of it, one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars is real money. Most of that realized up front, you know, in the in the beginning years. So that uh, so certainly something to consider. It's also something. It's also you know good information to know that if you look at uh, our our debt picture, you know we're uh, we're down to very little debt in eight years, and we go from about four million dollars in debt service to. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt service in eight years, which I think is a pretty good indicator. I think we're in pretty good financial condition from a debt standpoint. So uh, that's a that's good information. It's good information to see. So I, I'm glad to have this information. I appreciate you presenting it to us. Does anybody have any other questions for Ann? And then. Uh, it, it's a great opportunity, and I want to thank Ann uh, for all the work that she's done. Uh, anytime interest rates drop like this and we have an opportunity to refine one of these bonds and take advantage of some savings, we need that. We want to ask if the city commissioner wants to bring this back for action now or you want to think about it. I, I, <laughs> we could bring it back uh, as early as the next meeting. Uh, will you be available to bring it back? I, I will certainly check. The, if the city is interested, um, generally the way that refundings go, because they are subject to the prevailing market conditions, we would come back and ask the city commission to consider at that time what we call a parameters order, bond sale, and basically you put out the four guardrails, a principal amount of no more than, a final maturity of no longer than, a savings amount of no less than and an interest rate no higher than and then that way we are able to uh, move very quickly in the market and should you know in this particular case you want to position yourself so that um, you could access the market as quickly as possible to try to lock in those rates so what we would do is if it is the desire of the city commission we would work to put a timetable together and coordinate with mr. Serna to get back to put in place the um, parameters order it actually does take a little while the rating agencies right now understandably are extremely busy mm -hmm. so you have we would have to prepare a disclosure document the rating agency process takes three weeks so it would be something if you give us guidance we're happy to start laying the foundation but nothing formal would happen until we got the approval from the city okay. and, and the flip the flip side of interest rates approaching zero is, is the city savings account will pay chump change. That's right. That's right. That's true. <laughs> true. <laughs> but we've been living with that for a long time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's it's going to get it, chumpier. I, 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 I get a little worse, but it can't get much worse. <laughs> the, the, oh, I, never say that. We, we did words. not want to respond to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. Do you want to ask the commission anything else? That's it. All right. Very good. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a safe trip back. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Now we have item number nine, which is consideration of possible action to approve a resolution accepting the downtown improvement district budget. Thank you, Mayor. The item before you is the downtown improvement district budget uh, for fiscal year 2019-2020. The budget includes proposed revenues of $243,825 and proposed expenditures of $259,809. Um, the budget has been presented to the Downtown Improvement Board and staff recommends approval. So anybody have any questions on the Downtown Improvement District? Sir, so motion to approve 
the so IDs no. budget or motion. Second. 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 Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed like sign the motion carries. Item uh, 10, consideration possible action to approve the selection of the external auditing services. Thank you, Mayor. The, um, the current auditing services for the city contract ends on September 30th, 2019. Uh, the city's audit committee met on August 28th, 2019 to review proposals and to make a recommendation for the city commission's consideration. Staff is recommending approval of the audit committee's recommendation to select uh, Car Riggs Ingram CRI and authorize the mayor and city manager to sign the engagement letter for um, auditing services for the next three years. Does anybody have any questions? One motion for approval. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. The motion carries. <coughs> Item 11, consideration possible action to award banking services contract. Mayor, before, the, before we, we get the presentation, I just wanted to ask if we could consider tabling this uh, item. And the only, the only reason I'm asking is because this is a contract for three years, correct? Yes, for and, banking. Yes. Yeah, for the banking services. And so... It says here there was an attachment, but I didn't get to see anything. And so when I asked Dan, he graciously got me the information, but there's a box back there with four binders bigger than ours that I wanted to kind of look at to compare apples to apples. And so I was hoping that we could table this for two weeks just so that way we could see what the contracts looked like and how, I know the staff did it. I'm not saying I'm not gonna go with the recommendation. I just wanted to kind of see what was, what was presented. Is there time? Yes. Yes, the uh, current contract expires September 30th, 2019. And who went through the binders on staff? Uh, myself, a senior accountant, as well as we consulted with our investment advisors, uh, Hilltop Securities. Uh, we staff reviewed the services uh, offered by each bank while we used our investment advisors to review the earned, cre earned credit ratings, as well as the uh, fees assessed by the services that each bank is offering. Uh, so it was a combination. And they have a recommendation? Yes, right. they do. And I'm not saying I don't agree with it. I just wanted a chance to kind of look at some of that if we had, if I had time. I don't, I'm sure I can do it And anybody else who wants to. I just had some questions and, and like to review some of the, some of the items. I mean, uh, the binders to see their, their fees and their, their, uh, their proposals. So I'd like. Well, you can make a, I, but I'd like make to make a motion, a motion to table if you want. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to table item number eleven to the next city commission meeting. Is there a second? I'll allow us to vote. On it. I'll second. Thank you. Mayor. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those Maybe. opposed. 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 Mm -hmm. What was that? Three two. Were there three ayes. There were three ayes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The motion carries. Um, item 12, consideration possible action to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Ray, but we're going to table it till when? Until the next meeting? To the next meeting. Eight. Well, I'll put it back on. I mean, if the city manager doesn't put it back on, I'll put it back on. No, we have, we have to put it back on. Our contract expires at the end of the month. The only okay. reason I'm allowing this is because we're going to just, the next commission meeting will be voted on it. Just, just okay. give you the opportunity. Sure, and I appreciate that. Okay. okay. Um, <coughs> item 12, consideration possible action to uh, approve a resolution accepting Valley International Airport proposed budget for fiscal year 2019-20. Come on up. Get old Ron. <coughs> well, first of all, I'm subbing in for Marv. He sends his apologies for not being here. He's actually in D.C. Um, working with our advocate on... Uh, hopefully get some business. So anyhow, uh, there is slides, but uh, there's not up there. Do you have them in your package? If, if you do, then I'll just quickly go through this. Yes. Okay. Uh, our revenues are increasing uh, 6.8 million from the uh, mid-year up to uh, close to $7 million. So it's $166,000 increase. Uh, buildings are up 41. Um, and it's mainly because we have uh, an existing ARF building. It's the old building. Uh, it's now being rented out to the uh, FAA. 
at about $30,000. That's the biggest chunk of it. Uh, United Launch Alliance, we do have a contractual increase. It's about 36000 uh, I have increased parking and rental cars uh, and CFC strictly as a result of uh, increased business that we do have at the airport as a result of uh, two airlines uh, that were landed last year, that being Frontier and American Airlines. So, uh, so things are, are improving here. Um, gifts and news, uh, we do have a new vendor, which is uh, the same as the uh, vendor that we're using for, uh, uh, eat, uh, for our uh, food. Uh, they're called Tailwind, and what we do have is a, a rental increase in percentage. So it's representing about uh, 32000 for us. Um, one negative that we do have on the revenue side is uh, on the hangars. We do have a, uh, uh, an existing FBO that has uh, relinquished their building to us. And as a result, we're renting it out on a month-by-month -month basis, so we're dropping about $38,000 uh, for, uh, uh, for next count fiscal year, I should say. Um, airline landings, uh, they're down about $17,000. We are keeping our airline rates the same for the next five years. And that's $1.04 for signatory and $1.30 for non-signatory. This is per thousand pounds. Uh, but we do have uh, Southwest, they've uh, announced that they've uh, reduced a flight, so I've taken that out. So anyhow, in total, our revenues are up about 166000 Is there any questions on revenues? Okay, going to expenses then. Our expenses are uh, 6.4 million in the mid-year, and they're going up to about 6.8 million next year, so it's a $460,000 increase. Our salaries and wages are up uh, about $166,000, of which uh, because of the additional business, we have a requirement to have additional heads. So we have three heads. Uh, we do have... Uh, um, some turnover with uh, three retirements that are coming and as a result of that we will experience some training expenses uh, bringing in personnel a little <coughs> bit earlier in order to ensure that uh, they're fully engaged with the uh, position. Uh, benefits are up about 85000 so that's your FICA, uh, health insurance, uh, workers comp, uh, plus pension obligation so it's a combination of all those things. Um, insurances, I put in uh, an increase of approximately 13 uh, percent, plus uh, it looks uh, very high on here, it's $65,000, but as well as uh, the increase in insurance, uh, because we don't have the uh, FBO at one of these buildings, that we used to charge them for insurance uh, to make sure that it was covered, and um, I will not be getting that next year, so that's uh, an increase in cost. Ground handling services uh, are going from 207 to 292, so it's uh, up about $85,000. On ground handling, we do handle uh, two full airlines, so that's Frontier and uh, Sun Country, plus we do charters through SWIFT and charters through Sun Country. So what we've decided is uh, over the last couple of years, things have have run okay, but not quite as well as we anticipated, so we've had to hire uh, two full-time people plus we uh, will handle the rest of it, so handling the ramp and the ticket counter, that's all through part-time help. Uh, on top of the increase here, uh, we do have Frontier, which came in uh, partway through the year, so they started in late November last year, so there is an annualized effect here, so we have an increase in uh, flights. As far as uh, our personnel for the city, that's a, a charge from the city that ties into their budget. Um, in fairness, it's not an increase that's showing on here. What I did on the uh, mid-year is I dropped it too much. Uh, I shouldn't have done that, and we're actually going to be at around 884. Uh, I'm guessing at what August and September will be, so it's not that much of an increase. Uh, the next line is uh, ARF spending. Um, we do have uh, some trucks uh, that are coming off maintenance. As a result, uh, we'll be spending the money on uh, doing repairs as, as instead of having it under warranty. Uh, on the maintenance side, uh, we do have an increase in 20000 for um, the Trazzle floor. If, if you've been to the airport, you see on the main floor, there's a, a brand new floor in there, so it has to be resealed every year. On top of that, we have a uh, Trazzle that's going to be put on the second floor, so the concourse level, so we'll have to be redoing that one as well. 
a, a brighter note is on the information systems as a result of these uh, two air airlines that we added last year we had to put infrastructure in uh, it did cost a significant amount of money so we think we'll be dropping our IT expenditures by about 45,000 so that's a, a good one so in total we still are um, in, a, in, a, in a positive position we have uh, $177,000 that we're going to bring to the bottom line so is there any questions on the revenues for operations? Revenues or expenses? Okay, can, can next page. Can I have page? any questions for Rob? And is there a motion to approve the uh, Valley International Airport's proposed budget for 2019-20? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, the motion carries. All right, thank you, thank Rob. You. Appreciate it. <coughs> Item 13, consideration of possible action to approve an ordinance on first reading to amend the City of Marlton Code of Ordinances, Chapter 109, Subdivisions, Article 5, Standards and Specifications, Section 109-124F, sidewalks, uh, sidewalks to require sidewalks on local streets and perimeter streets, applicant of the City of Marlton. Mayor, City Commission, uh, good evening. Uh, we're proposing some amendments to the sidewalk ordinance. Uh, as Part of the subdivision ordinance, uh, major changes uh, should take care of any. If the ordinance is adopted, there should not be any, any more variances on this subject. Uh, the amendments are categorized into five major categories. Uh, amendment, the major category number one is that all streets will require sidewalks. Currently, sidewalks are required on major arterial, minor arterials, and major collector streets only. The proposed amendment will also require sidewalks on lo local interior streets, regardless of whether the residential subdivision is within 1,000 feet of a school. <coughs> this amendment is, uh, is in, in, in your packet. Uh, as you know, right now, on residential subdivisions, we only require sidewalks if it's 1,000 feet of a school. This will take care of it. T take care of that, we will require sidewalks in all residential subdivisions in the future. Amendment number two, sidewalk requirements are clarified for subdivisions fronting a perimeter street. Sidewalks fronting a perimeter street shall be installed at the developer's expense at the time curb and gutter is installed or if already there. If the perimeter street has no curb and gutter, the developer shall escrow funds for sidewalks along the boundary of the subdivision. This is an example uh, of a subdivision that was approved a few years ago, this is on the, on the west side of the of the city along Wins Wilson Road. This subdivision has a perimeter street, which is Wilson Road. If uh, under this new ordinance, if Wilson Road was had curb and gutter, we will require the developer to install the sidewalk up front <coughs> before the subdivision gets recorded. Uh, Wilson Road does not have curb and gutter at this time, so we will, in this case, we will require escrow funds instead of building the sidewalks. That way, whenever the street is improved, the city will use those escrow funds to build the sidewalks when, when the street is improvements are. Is there time on the escrow? No, no timeline. It's whenever the city is ready to, be, to improve the street. And how will you collect escrow? Excuse me? How will you collect escrow? We will require an estimate, an estimate from the project engineer that is reviewed by the city engineer. Once approved, they will have to give us the funds or a letter of credit, and we will, we will not allow the subdivision to be recorded until those funds are in, in the bank. Okay, I'm sorry, but you said a letter of credit? It could be a letter of credit. So what happens if 10 years down the road, the developer that was doing it is no longer in business? On, on letters of credit, they're, they're normally for one year. So after one year, we, we will cash in the letter of, we will go to the bank and cash it in and then put, put it in the bank. And so if he's still, so again, same question. If he's not in business after that, the, how do you collect the, it? No, the, the, we will collect it. We, we either get the escrow funds from the developer up front, we get a check, cashier's check, or letter of credit. The letter of credit is normally a one year uh, expiration that we, if before the one year, we will go to the bank if, if we don't get the funds, we will go to the bank and cash the check, the letter of credit. Get a check from the bank, and then we deposit in our account. I understand, but if the, again, the question is, if the, if the guy, even within that one year, the developers, because developers come and go a lot. Mm -hmm. If they go out of business, 
How do you collect that money? Uh, is the, the, the letter of no, credit? Because if you're not doing a front, you're going to have credit. Yeah. And then on the business, how do you collect it? It, the, the bank is um, is promising to cash the, to cash the, it, it, it's, it's, a it's a bank obligation. Oh, okay. It's, it's, a bank's bank. it's the I bank's know. risk. Yeah, I okay. mean I don't know. I mean I, it's gonna be hard to get a letter of credit. Right. For the yeah. developers it's gonna be difficult to get a letter of credit for the reason that you just right. mentioned. Uh, because they because they're gonna and they're gonna they're gonna require collateral for the letter of credit okay. in the form of cash or Asset. property or other property that they're satisfied with uh, that they would be able to collect if they had to pay on the letter of credit and then they're going to charge a fee on top of that so, I, mean, that's, I don't I don't see that hardly ever being used it's, it's rare gonna cheaper, but it's going to be cheaper yes. for the developer just to put the sidewalk <clears> and, <throat> get the letter. and we're talking about this at the development stage we're yes. talking about the subdivision right. stage so in one year they're going to be still in that stage where those properties probably have not been sold. So I, I, I kind of agree. I've worked with letters of credit, and you better have really good credit just to even ask for one. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, so okay. basically we will not allow the subdivision to be recorded until we have those funds uh, in the bank or the proper letter of credit. Amendment number three. The installation of sidewalks for lots fronting a local interior street is established. Sidewalks fronting a local interior street shall be required along street fronts and sides of lots at the time of building improvements on the lot. A note on the plat shall be required to this effect prior to subdivision recording. For, sub for residential subdivision, sidewalks shall also be installed, installed at a minimum of three feet from the street curve or in line with existing sidewalks in the area. And this is basically what most of the cities in the Rio Grande Valley uh, does they, they require a note on the plat. When the house gets built, that's when the sidewalk uh, gets built at the same time with the house. This is what's different from anywhere else in the, in the Rio Grande Valley. We're proposing escrows to cover gaps. As you know, a lot of subdivisions you have gaps because people buy a lot and they don't build on it for, for many years. They buy it to, for the son or for the daughter or as an, as an investment. So you end up with gaps in, in the subdivision that could be there 10, 20, 30 years and really takes away from the walkability of the, of the neighborhood. So we're proposing to address that. This is a very uh, unique, very you know, innovative. And we're proposing to request escrows in the amount of 15% of the total estimate for the interior streets and the city will use those escrows approximately 10 years later, but it could be sooner, depending on the situation, to fill the gaps. The plan is whenever the city comes in to do an overlay, uh, the city will use those funds to uh, cover those gaps. And uh, you may ask where the 15% uh, came from, <coughs> where that figure came from. Uh, we did a study and we inventoried all the subdivisions in Harlingen, recorded since 1999 to 2019, um, with 10 lots or more. And for the subdivisions from 99 to, 20, to 2009, which is between 10 years and 20 years, uh, we, did, uh, we calculated all the lots and then the built, you know, what percentage of the lots are built on, you know, how many, and this is from the appraisal, we got the information from the appraisal district. So on the average, on the, all the subdivisions in Harlingen between 10 and 20 years old, the percentage built out is 85%. And that's where we got the 15% uh, from. Can you go to the prior slide? So we've approved the subdivision, and of course, Part of that approval is the interior streets do not need to have a sidewalk until at, at the point that they build on it. Correct. And I, and I get that. At what point does the subdivider have to come up with the 15%? Before, like, like the perimeter streets, we will require this before the subdivision gets recorded, the 15%. So, so on top of having to build the sidewalks on the main streets, there'll be an automatic 15% at recording of the subdivision for the entire subdivision. Correct. 
Got it. Does any other city in the valley have this? No, this, is, this will be the first city in the Rio Grande Valley and, and possibly the, the state that is addressing the problem of gaps. And we think this will be very effective in addressing the problem. We're okay with taking the lead on innovative ideas. I think this is a, this, we've been getting a lot of variance requests where yeah. folks don't yeah. want to put in sidewalks at all. <coughs> I think what this does is allows them to leave the sidewalks out until they build on the property. But to fill in the gaps, at some point when we overlay the street, this allows us some funds to fill in those <coughs> gaps. Now, at the point that they fill them in within 10 years, if the entire subdivision fills in, before the 10-year period, they can ask for the money back, that 15%. That's where I was going. So, um, okay, so yes. we know that an average 15% doesn't get built out. So now I've created a subdivision with 70 lots. I've given you my 15%. I sold my last lot and built on the last lot. I can walk into City Hall and ask for my money w back. Within the 10-year period. Is that part of this? Yes. Uh, it could also be sooner. Let's say the subdivision is very successful and it builds out in three years. Yes. Sure. But also we put some language in the ordinance that we could use the funds for maintenance, for repairs. So, I saw that. So we, and well, something that the Planning and, Zoning uh, Planning and Zoning Commission recommended is that we adopt guidelines. So our guidelines could say we're going to use the funds to cover the gaps or for repairs, and we choose not to return the money. Or we could say, if you, the subdivision is built out, we will give you the money back. So the, the guidelines is something that we need to work on. And the work on. is 100%? Or, or it would have to be 100%? Yeah, it would have to be 100%. It would have so there's to be one lot on there? Well, that it it, it, it has to be 100%. If we, have a, if we have less than 15% remaining, and let's say 10 years, I can come to the city and say, we have less than 15%. <coughs> no, that's what I just said. You said 100%. It, it, it would have to be 100%. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, if it's the a cost, costs are different. At the time, 10 years ago, the cost of sidewalks was much less than it is today. Okay. And the guidelines, have we already developed those guidelines? No, that's. What we're going to use, or are we just now? Well, right, I need the ordinance to be adopted, to be approved, and then we can work on the, okay. on the guidelines. Fair now, if it's one or two lots, I guess a developer could go in there and build the, build the sidewalks too, right. to get the, yeah, get it, the it, money. It was one of money. <laughs> put it in. <laughs> that that yeah. was the other point. So if the developer decided to put all the perimeter side, all the sidewalks in on, at his own expense, once he's felt he's at a point of maturity, he can then come back and say, OK, walk, all the sidewalks are done. Now I need my 15%. The, this is our attempt at, at a compromise yeah. <clears throat> with oh, developers. Okay. and. Uh, one of the other things is, uh, is this one here, the curb ramps. Correct. So a concern that, that I've had and that I've stressed to staff is the installation of curb ramps at the time that the plat is approved and, and, and the curb and gutter is installed. Uh, not necessarily the sidewalks, the curb ramps. Uh, that way folks can still get up off the curb. And uh, so we're going to require those at the I time that the I subdivision thought. is platted and the curb and gutter are installed. Those, those won't be escrowed. Those will be constructed at that time. Just so we can all be clear, we're talking only entire subdivisions, not single lot on this. This, this is for how do I record a subdivision? I'm going to build right a future. subdivision with 30 lots. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. OK. Anybody have any other questions about this? Yeah, I have one. Uh, to hit Mr. Vial's point, if there is a a subdivision, whether it's Adams Crossing or whoever, and they want to build a house, do, are they required to put the sidewalk? And it's it's already it's already plotted. It's existing. No, this is for I new. I was gonna wait for his presentation to finish to ask that question. If yes, I was gonna ask. you go ahead and answer that. This is for this is for new subdivisions. This is for uh, new subdivisions. Yeah. Moving, this is moving forward. Yeah. Are the ones that are existing, Commissioner, that have a gap? At, at some point, if when we pave that road, we're probably going to have to fill that gap. Yes. My, my question is, so this doesn't, last commission meeting, we had somebody that came, wanted, and I, my proposal was pay the escrow. 
the escrow was the escrow for the full amount of the place on the sidewalk, not 15%. So that will continue. We still have that option available to people that want to re, they, they, for, they need to replat their, their property. They're in a subdivision that never had sidewalks. I believe you showed that one at the, I forgot what it's called, Pelican's Landing or something mm -hmm. like that. They have no sidewalks. So I go there and I bought two lots. Now I want to resubdivide and make it one large lot. So now the new ordinance says I have to have a sidewalk. Correct. And so, but I'm going to have the only sidewalk on the entire block. So I have the option of doing the escrow, putting it on escrow. And then escrow is 100% because it's just that uh, small lot. Up until the point that you build a, a house on that lot. That's what I'm saying, but I already have a house. This was an existing house on a street with no sidewalks. And so when they replatted it, because they had to resubdivide, it turned out that now the persons had to put in a sidewalk. And we asked for escrow, and that's what the recommendation of this commission was, last commission. That's not that, yes, correct. Mm -hmm. And so my question is, is this 15% is only for the builder. If a person does one lot, because it's happened, Rather than putting a sidewalk, they can do the escrow, but it has to be at 100% of the cost of putting in that sidewalk. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I keep looking at Dan, but I mean, okay. need to be addressed. So, correct. one more question. In a new subdivision, a lot of times the developer will pre-sell <coughs> pre the lots. How do you address that? Because the owner will not be the individual and not the developer. How is that addressed as far as, is it when they record it, when they buy it? How does that how does that get transferred over to the responsibility of the well the the uh, the subdivision will have a note on the plat so this is a this is a subdivision get that gets recorded and on the side it's going to have notes and the note is going to say a sidewalk to be required during construction whoever builds the builder the owner right uh, but you're showing me like the, the they pre-sell like let's say it's 30 lots and or 50 lots and they, they've sold 20. but it's in the legal documents yeah. but but and, and they, they can't pre-sell unless it's been subdivided and recorded so it can't be a raw piece of land because no one knows what size the lots right. are until you know the size of lots and it's all that's been platted and recorded which is when all this kicks in that's when that's what happens okay all right yeah and I, and I think I, I love the idea of the curb ramp going in right as a curb and um, gutter together because that's that still allows folks to get up. I'm certified. I'm certified by an ADA consultant. Uh, we will also require that, and that way we'll not we will not have any ADA issues uh, with those subdivisions because uh, the ramps will be built correctly from the beginning. And so it's, okay. we're going to have a document in the subdivision file saying these ramps are, are certified by a licensed ADA consultant, which makes it a lot easier later okay. on. I'd like to ask uh, the city attorney to read the caption now. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the city of Harlingen, chapter 109, subdivisions, article five, standards and specifications, section 109, 124F, sidewalks, to require sidewalks on local and perimeter streets providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on first reading? Can we have Mesmar in here to vote? Yeah. Okay. I think that's it, man. See him. We will See him coming back. We will wait the return of Commissioner there he Mesmar. Comes. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> motion to approve. Okay. Second. We have a motion to approve. A second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 By the way, we like we also mapped carriers. all the, since we inventoried all the subdivisions for the last 20 years, we went ahead and mapped them. So you have growth pretty much. All the yellows are the new, the subdivisions recorded in the, in the past 20 years. So you have a good distribution, uh, north, south, mm. east, and west. So that's good. Good information. Right. That was a cool map. Okay. Cool map. Uh, item 14 is consideration of possible action to approve the preliminary and final <coughs> plat of the proposed Sun Country subdivision with conditions 
and consider a variance request for the perimeter streets sidewalk requirements as per section 109-124F5, bearing a legal description of 38.202 acres of land out of Block 13, Harlington Land and Water Company Subdivision C, located on the north side of Lafayette Avenue, west of Chester Park Road, applicant Ariel Chavez of CADC on Corporation, care of Beatriz Castellanos. Uh, this subdivision has a 15-year uh, history. Just very briefly, the, it was first processed in October of 2004 by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Road and utilities were installed in two, back in 2004-2005, uh, but they didn't finish the process, unfortunately. The property was annexed in 2000, September 2005. The subdivision was processed again in, two, in March of 2017, but Again, they did not finish the process. Uh, major repairs were, con were done to the streets and the utility lines and the, the streets and the water and sewer lines have been approved by engineering and the Harlingen Water Waterworks. Uh, the perimeter streets uh, on the south side Lafayette and on the west side Ramsey streets are still in the county. This is the location map uh, over here is uh, Lafayette, it's Chester Park and it has a boundary of Ramsey to the west, Wilson to the north, and there's an area. So those streets have, as you know, have been there um, uh, many years, and they're trying to get the subdivision recorded. Views of the subdivision, this one from uh, Lafayette, and this one from uh, Ramsey. But they're proposing to uh, record these are the ones in light green are the buildable lots, and then what's in red are non-buildable lots. They're <coughs> proposing to have all the streets recorded at the same time with a utility easement, but these are the only lots that will be buildable uh, at this time because the, dr the drainage is in place. For the rest of the area, the drainage is not in place, so they'll have to do some drainage improvements in order to, to move on with the rest of the subdivision but they're proposing to record, to record all the streets at this time. 32 buildable lots. There is a list of conditions in your packet of everything that still needs to <coughs> be done. Uh, one of them is the curve ramps, as we mentioned earlier, and they, I think they already started the process and they have agreed to build all the curve ramps uh, up front. There is a variance request, and this is for the perimeter sidewalks. Instead of having to escrow 100% of the perimeter sidewalks, they're proposing to escrow 15%, and they're proposing a note on the plat that whenever a house gets built along those boundaries, that they, uh, a sidewalk will be required in the front and in the rear. Uh, staff recommends uh, disapproval of the uh, well, approval of the plat with the conditions and disapproval to the variance request since it is not in, it's not in line with the ordinance that you just approved. And Planning and Zoning Commission also recommends approval of the subdivision but denied the variance request for the perimeter sidewalks. Was everybody clear on that? Yes. Okay. I think like so. the motion the same. The, 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 the preliminary. We're going to approve the plat, but we're not going to approve the variance right. for, the the sidewalks, for the preliminary. Which means, which means he's going to have to put 15 in escrow for the perimeter, for the interior, and he has to build out the perimeter. The perimeter. Escrows, escrows for the perimeter. Oh, escrow because there is no uh, curb and gutter. Correct. Yes. And this is basically. Uh, so their entryway to the subdivision is off Lafayette, is that the main? They have an entrance on, on Lafayette and they also have an entrance on over here on Ramsey. Got it. Yeah. And so the land in pink or red, that's county property or is that no, city property? No, the entire, the entire subdivision is inside the city. Okay. The, this road and this road are still in the county, but the city could annex them if the city desires. Um, they're proposing to get, to have all of these streets recorded at this time, but these are the only buildable lots okay, because so the drainage is in place. So uh, 
later in the future they're, they're planning to do drainage improvements to complete the other phases. Okay, so then the red uh, properties, they need to have further capital improvements to make it possible the drainage. to sell the home, yeah. the lots for homes. But that's the developers. Yeah, that's the developers. The streets are in, in <coughs> place, are approved. The water and sewer lines are in place and approved. It's just the drainage that is pending for the area in red. So the, the so staff's recommendation is to approve the preliminary and final plan of the proposed Sun Country subdivision with conditions and to deny the variance requested. And that's what the and that's what the planning and zoning yes. commission did. So that's there, my motion. That's a motion, motion to accept the staff's recommendation. Is there, there's a second by Commissioner Leal. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed like sign motion carries. Item 15, consideration possible action to approve the naming of the mountain bike trail as Henry Roberts Loop, in memory of Mr. Henry Roberts. As Mayor, City Commission, uh, good afternoon. Um, we placed this item on the agenda um, at um, the request of the uh, Mayor's Wellness Council, uh, and it's been discussed at several of our meetings, but um, the uh, you all recall when, when the property was donated by Elkins, uh, Mr. Roberts approached the city and um, suggested that we turn that property into a mountain bike trail. And so <clears throat> soon after that he got, he fell ill and uh, several of the volunteers that he was working with continued the work out there and worked with our staff and, and so we built out several, uh, about two miles of trail that we cleared and is now open. Um, the entire project was a uh, 6.2 mile trail and so we're continuing to work on on those um, trails and those those clearing of that area um, but anyway the the, the um, request was that if we could name uh, the trail inside of the property uh, as uh, Henry Rob Henry Roberts loop um, and so we um, the mayor's wellness council voted on it and they made a recommendation to bring to the city commission a motion for an approval Exactly. <coughs> Any other discussion? Yeah. What a, uh, you got the second. Okay. A motion and a second. Yep. Any other discussion? Yeah. This is a great. This is a great idea. A wonderful way to honor Henry Roberts and his family. So all those who ever say aye. 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 I suppose like sign. Motion carries. Item 16 is consideration of possible action to authorize the Orange Police Department to auction off a total of eight. <coughs> Motor vehicles into one trailer, two generators using govdeals.com auction website. Chief? Mayor, commissioners, uh, as you might recall, a couple months ago we brought a list of vehicles to auction off on GovDeals. Uh, in that time we had the flood event in which several of the vehicles we were planning on auction off were damaged and subsequently totaled by the insurance. So we went ahead and uh, resubmitted the list had to add a couple more vehicles to it and a, a couple generators, but we're just asking for permission to go ahead and sell off this uh, surplus equipment. Motion for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed, like sign, motion <coughs> carries. Out of 17 is board appointments. I have none. I have none. 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 Okay, I have uh, Jennifer Colton to the Animal Shelter Advisory Committee. Is there a motion to approve the So board moved. Appointments? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. <coughs> you want to do that? Jennifer Colton. Okay, item 19. Uh, okay, we're going to go to item 19. <coughs> Citizen communications are. Amanda. Oh, I see. Let me see here where I left my list. Robert Lethwich, um, tax increase and budget. I, I guess he left. Uh, Ron Lozano, same thing, Mayor. Tax increase and budget. But they're not here. Okay, they're not here. Okay. Item uh, 18, uh, consider uh, uh, executive closed session percent Texas Government Code Section 5.1.1072. Receive legal advice regarding certain bills in the 86th Texas Legislature affecting the Texas Open Meetings Act. Is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, motion carries. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be in executive session just uh, uh, receiving legal advice from our attorney. No 
be, there are no other items on the agenda.